Let's see if YouTube is gonna kick in. Hopefully everyone is doing well out there. Let's go YouTube. It should be all right. Okay, we're in. I am Drew Badger, the founder of EnglishAnyone.com and the English Fluency Guide. Welcome back to another live video here on YouTube. We are working. If you have any questions or comments, uh, just post them in the chat like usual and we'll get rolling. <clears throat> Uh, I thought this would be, Amar, nice to see you there. I thought this would be an interesting video uh, just to talk about some of the differences in how I communicate in these videos. So how I speak in a lesson like this versus how I speak in a normal conversation with another native speaker, especially in a casual way. So many people complain, uh, many English learners complain that they have trouble or they can understand English teachers, but they have trouble understanding natives. And the reason is because people actually speak differently. And I want to give you a demonstration of this in this video. So I wanted to talk, uh, give you an example really from a conversation I had uh, with a friend of mine about uh, him looking for a present for his wife. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. We're going to look at part of that conversation and I'm going to show you how natives communicate differently uh, even though the native language, uh, it's still correct. So the, the kind of things that you would learn in a regular uh, English classroom, uh, they are correct English. But again, if you don't have exposure to native speech, especially actual conversations between natives and lots of exposure to this, then it's going to be more difficult for you to understand natives. So let's take a look at this. So today, uh, I knew I would be writing something, so I actually prepared, look at that, boom, a whole conversation right here for everybody. Actually, it's not a whole conversation. And it looks like a lot, but uh, as you will see, it's actually not that much. And we're going to talk about how we can take this and make it into a, a shorter, faster, easier, more natural and native uh, way of speaking. And I'll talk about pronunciation a little bit as well. Uh, so what I've done, as I mentioned earlier in this video, is that there really are two different ways of speaking. And of course, we get a fire truck or something like usual. Uh, so there are two different ways uh, of speaking. You have the more kind of textbook version, and this is the way most people are teaching English, and this is why it becomes really difficult, even if you take private lessons with an English teacher, to transition to real communication with different kinds of native speakers. So you must, you really must have this different kind of uh, exposure to lots of different native speakers. Uh, so we're going to talk about that now. Uh, this, what I have written up here, is not the actual conversation. Uh, this is a more textbook version of that, and so we're going to go through, and I'm going to help you understand this, and then we will train, uh, kind of train you a little bit on some more natural speech. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions before you get started, let me know. I'll just go through comments right quick, but nice to see everybody here. I want to make sure I get through all this without taking too much time, but nice to see everybody here. Uh, let's see. Nice to see everybody. Hello from Miami. So we just got started. Julio says hello from Dominican Republic. When I started learning English on my own a couple of years ago, I used to watch you all the time, and your videos really helped improve my English skills. Glad to hear it. All right. Let's get started. So I'm going to go through this. Again, this is a more textbook version of the conversation, and I will be saying it uh, slower, more easily, so you understand everything. But uh, hopefully, this should make sense to everyone. So uh, my friend begins. So this will be my friend A, and I am B. Uh, so A asks, uh, may I ask your opinion? May I ask your opinion? I need an idea for my wife's birthday. May I ask your opinion? I need an idea for my wife's birthday. Hopefully this makes sense. It should be pretty easy. This is a typical way of asking what someone thinks uh, or if you want to ask for someone's opinion. You can also say, may I get your opinion? That's something you can also say. So may I ask your opinion or may I get your opinion? Or uh, an even longer way you can say, may I ask for 
your opinion or may I ask you for your opinion. But as you'll see, uh, it's much easier. We can uh, eliminate many words. We'll cut some of these out in the conversation uh, as we get to the more conversational version. But I want to make sure everybody understands this, what we have so far. So this should be pretty easy. May I ask your opinion? I need an idea for my wife's birthday. And I respond, how about getting her some flowers? How about getting her some flowers? So this is my idea, okay, what if you get her some flowers? So how about is actually a very native and natural way of expressing what if. So why don't you do this? Uh, or here's a potential idea. So how about, uh, particularly we use this uh, with kids a lot. So we're asking kids questions like how about this or how about that or what do you think about this? It's not only for kids, but uh, children learn this uh, when they're very young, but often adult natives or adult non-natives who are learning English do not. All right. So why not buying her some flowers? Yes, Tom, that's another thing you could say. Nils, nice to see you there from Wisconsin. So again, uh, I want to say before we go any further that yes, there are many ways we could express these ideas and you are welcome to post more just like Tom did. So you can say like, why not get her some flowers? So that's another way of expressing this. Uh, and this is, uh, I talk about this in Speak Like Me, this idea of moving like water, where if you have lots of ways of expressing yourself, you never get stuck with only one thing if you can't remember what that is. So there's always something else, I don't remember this way, well, why don't I say it this way instead? So instead of how about, you can say why not? Why not get her some flowers? Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And so he responds, no, I have already given her flowers many times. I have already given her flowers many times. All right. So I say, what about flowers? And he says, no, I've, I've done that many times before. So I have already given her flowers many times. Or you could say you don't even need the already in there. Uh, it makes it sound a bit more natural. Uh, people will use this. But I have given her flowers many times it means the same thing. So already, uh, you don't really need to put that in there, but natives will use this a lot, actually. So I have already done it, all right? It puts a little bit more emphasis uh, on like, yes, I did this thing in the past. Like, yeah, I already did that. So my friend is a little bit frustrated. He's trying to think of an idea. And so I give, you know, a pretty like bad, you know, use of the idea, like what about some flowers? <laughs> That's a pretty basic thing. Most people think of that already. Tom asks, can I use yet at the end of this phrase? I like, know uh, at, at the end of which phrase? Tom, the correct sentence is why not buy her some flowers? Uh, well, you could, you could say why not? Why not buy her some flowers or why not get her some flowers? That's all, that's all fine. All right. <clears throat> so you can get is another very common word that you could use in place of buy. So instead of saying buy her some flowers, why not get her some flowers? All right. Again, uh, there are already a few kind of more native ways of expressing things. Instead of saying buy, we use get, which is just much more common, and we can use this very easily for all kinds of things. So I could get her some flowers. It means I could like pick some flowers, or I could buy some flowers, or I could get some flowers from somewhere else. But get really could be any of those things. So the, the idea is just we're going to give her some flowers, and it doesn't really matter where we get the flowers. All right. Uh, given her flowers many times. No, you wouldn't say yet because it's already happened. Uh, so like already is that we're talking about the past here. And so if I say no, I have already given her flowers. Now, if we wanted to say the opposite, like, uh, oh, I have not given her any flowers yet. Uh, again, you don't need to use yet, but that would be the use of that. So if you're, if you're talking about you did not do something, uh, I have not given her flowers yet. I have not given her flowers yet. Vladimir, nice to see you there. <clears throat> All right, so he says, uh, no, I have already given her flowers many times. He's a little bit frustrated. And I say, well, what are her current interests? Abdil, uh, Ab, nice to see you there from uh, Egypt. What are her current interests? So now I'm trying to think, uh, like, how can I 
uh, like how can I help him find something and make him think more about his wife? So he's asking me what to get his wife and I don't really know. <laughs> so I'm trying to think, okay, well, what are her current interests? What is she, uh, what is she interested in? What does she like? Okay. So what are her current interests? What are her current interests? So what does she like right now? What is she interested in right now? Like, is there a TV show she's watching or does she like, I don't know, she's talking about something, whatever. And my friend says, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So you could also say, I don't know, or I don't really know. Uh, I'm not sure. So any of these things would be fine. Remember, there are always multiple ways to express certain things. This is really just one general situation and each one of these phrases is a kind of mini situation within this conversation. So here, I don't know. That's the idea he's trying to express and these are the words he's using, but he could use something different. All right. And then I say, she must have said something. She must have said something. So he's saying, well, I don't know what she's interested in. And I say, well, she must have said something. So she must be uh, saying something like, I like this, or talking about this, or I have a problem, or something like that. There must be something she said that she's interested in. Uh, and you should pay closer attention. You should pay closer attention. All right, so to pay attention means to watch and to listen carefully. Like right now, you should pay attention. Uh, this is an interesting idea to talk about paying attention. So if we think about attention, we are giving attention uh, to something right now. Like you are watching this or you are listening to some music or something. You are giving attention or you are paying attention. You are paying, like just like you pay money for something, you are paying attention. All right, let me go back through comments before we go through uh, and adjust some of this. So right now you are paying attention. Glad to hear. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Yes, to get Muhammad is, it is like a magic word. I've done actually quite a few videos on the verb get. Uh, what does she like most currently? You wouldn't say most currently, you would just say uh, recently if you want to say most. So we don't say most currently, but we do say most recently most recently. And that's an interesting thing. Sometimes you will have these slight differences in the language where one thing is okay and another thing is not. And so really pay attention. So again, pay close attention or pay even closer attention so you can hear and, and listen to what natives are saying in different situations. All right. So we wouldn't say, uh, what was that? Most, uh, most currently, we would just say most recently. Uh, Nils says, the only thing that helps is a handbag or shoes. That's <laughs> Nils, are you married? Let, let me know if you're married or you have a, a special someone over there. Uh, Minister says, hi, Drew. Since a few days back, I started to watch your YouTube videos. You are so inspiring and your videos are awesome. Please continue regular update. I am improving. By the way, I'm from Nepal. Well, I'm glad to hear they're helpful. Uh, if you know other people who would also enjoy them, please recommend us. Butcher says, hey, Drew, it's Drew, isn't it? You seem like talking in a Southern accent, don't you? <laughs> yes, uh, some people uh, say or they think I sound a little bit Southern. Uh, I'm from actually the South side of Chicago and uh, the way I'm speaking right now, it's a kind of special voice I have uh, really for these lessons uh, to make sure people can hear me, but I'm speaking a little bit more slowly uh, and that maybe that has a little bit of that southern way of speaking that's a little bit uh, slower, just to make sure people can understand what I'm saying. All right. Uh, oh, you are married. Oh, okay, great. Well, hopefully, maybe you can think about something for your wife too, <laughs> for for her birthday or whatever. All right. So let me go back. I'm going to read over the whole thing again, uh, and then we will look at the more native, natural version that I actually said. Okay. So the actual conversation we had. Uh, again, this is a more formal textbook version of it, just so you can understand each of these situations. Remember, we have the the general situation of trying to figure out a, a present for somebody's wife. But then each one of these little sentences is an idea, and we could express that in different ways, all right? So my friend says, may I ask your opinion? I need an idea for my wife's birthday. And I say, how about getting her some flowers? No, he says, I have already given her flowers many times, many times. 
And I say, well, what are her current interests? And he says, I'm not sure, all right? Don't say that to your wife if you, <laughs> you can say that to your friend, but don't say that to your wife. Like, I don't know what my wife is interested in. Uh, and then I say, she must have said something. So probably, usually women will tell you something uh, and you should pay closer attention. You should pay closer attention, all right? So hopefully uh, it doesn't look like we have any more questions about this. So let's go back and tweak some of this. Uh, Ohio from Yokohama, and I see there Tsubasa. Tom, I'd like to listen to you sometimes speaking faster so I can see whether I understand you. Uh, if you look at some of our conversation videos, or if uh, I think you are a member of Fluent for Life, if you are not, uh, you should be in the program, but that's where I speak normally. Uh, how are you from Azerbaijan? I wish to talk with you via email address. If you have questions, you can email us. Just go to info at englishanyone.com. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Mohammed says, can we say, why don't you get, get her? You wouldn't say get to her. You wouldn't say get to her. You would say just get her something. Uh, if I want to get to someone, usually this means I'm trying to communicate with them in some way. Like I'm trying to get to my son. Maybe he doesn't want to do his homework and I'm trying to get to him, like get through to him. It's, it's a different idea of just getting something for someone. So you can get flowers for a person. So get like get flowers or get a present for someone. So that's the where the, the action is going. I'm getting it for my wife. Or I can just get my wife some flowers. All right. Sometimes in English, uh, the language can seem confusing if you don't use those words. So like here, how about getting her some flowers? Or I can say, how about getting some uh, flowers uh, for her? I could say that as well. So there are different ways of saying it, but you wouldn't say get to. All right, we get something for because we're doing it for like the benefit of someone else. It's not just the direction, but we're talking about uh, doing something for their benefit. All right, uh, so let's talk about this. We're going to erase some of this. And if you want to see the textbook version of this again, it will be down in the description uh, below this video. All right, so may I ask your opinion? Can you think of a better way to express that? What's a different way? What's a way a native might say this? We're asking for some help or we're asking for some advice. Can you think of another way to say this? Now, I'm going to give you one, what I actually said or what actually uh, my friend said in the conversation, uh, but there are different ways you could say this in addition to what I'm, gonna, what I'm going to show here. So may I ask your opinion? We're going to erase this. And let's see, get my black marker here. Can I... Can I pick your brain? Can I pick your brain? So you can think about like there are ideas in my head and my friend is asking, can he like pick, pick at some of those ideas in my brain? So can I pick your brain? Can I pick your brain? Uh, again, uh, can I pick your brain? I mean, we, we would also say like, may I, but pick your brain. This is the idea of doing something where you're just, you're like trying to get at the ideas in somebody else's head. Okay, can I pick your brain? This is one way of expressing this, all right? I don't want to cover lots of different things, but this is the basic idea of I need some ideas. So can I pick your brain? Can I pick your brain, all right? What we had before is perfectly fine, but again, this is just a more natural native way of saying this that you could also use. It's correct. Oh, uh, Vega says all ears. So all ears would imply like that, that's kind of something you say after you're asking for help. So if I'm listening to someone, then I'm all ears. But first, if I'm asking for someone's help or their opinion about something, I'm beginning by saying this. Can I pick your brain? Can I pick your brain? Can I pick your brain? So remember, we have the idea of picking, uh, to pick something like to choose something like I pick uh, like this food or this drink or something for my lunch. I pick this or I pick this person to be my wife. But picking also means like you can, you're kind of scratching at something. Like if I have a pickaxe and I'm trying to get some gold out of the side of a mountain, like a pickaxe. So I'm picking at someone's brain. I'm not choosing your brain, I'm picking at it like this. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, 
All right, make sure people are following along here. Uh, oh, Nils says, I am a woman and my name is Annette. Nils Holgren is this name of the ship that took, oh, that I took, oh, wow. Oh, okay, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, so I guess maybe, all right, well, you can, you can tell me then. I guess you know about handbags and, and shoes, I guess. <laughs> I don't know why I thought you were, why I thought you were a man. I guess, oh, because of the name. That, that's where that's from. You didn't correct me this whole time. Uh, let's see. She might have mentioned something around you. You must uh, be more all ears, uh, all ears when dealing with women. Yes. So that's, we, we don't really use the expression that way. We don't just say like, I'm all ears in general. <laughs> But uh, typically when we're listening to someone in a particular situation, oh, I'm all ears. So I'm really listening carefully to what you have to say. Uh, so can I take your advice or you would say, can I get your advice or can I ask advice? Can I ask uh, for your advice about something? All right. Uh, Zek Limbo says, your way of teaching is very impressive. Really, I'm just helping you understand same, the same way I would teach my own kids. Uh, it's figuratively saying, I'm going to have your brain and see what you, yes. So that, that's the basic idea. Uh, it's just like, I'm, I'm literally looking for ideas in the same way you would pick for, for gold or some kind of, you know, like an actual, I'm looking for something. I'm using a pickaxe. We draw a pickaxe for you. So it's a pretty large, like shovel <clears throat> kind of thing. You swing it like that and try to get gold or something out of rock. Uh, and so I want to pick like some of the good ideas out of your brain. So there already are lots of ideas in your brain and I want to pick, I want to pick your brain to try to get a few ideas from you. That's the idea. Can I pick your brain? All right. So I need an idea for my wife's birthday. <clears throat> we're going we're gonna to keep this one the same because this is about as simple as we could get or just say I need an idea for my wife's birthday. And so I say, how about getting her some flowers? All right. Now, now I'm going to take this and just shorten it just to show that this is the way uh, like I could say this is it's fine to say how about getting her some flowers. Uh, but I could just take this and just say, erase this. How about flowers? Very simple, very easy. Remember, natives, like we understand the point. We don't need to say like where we're getting the flowers from or what kind of flowers we're not talking about. The, the, the main point, the idea is just, how about flowers? How about flowers? How about flowers? <clears throat> yes, the, the, I think the name Nils is, is, a, is a man's name. And the only way I knew that was from Die Hard, that Die Hard movie. <laughs> so how about flowers? Okay, so I could say this with anything. How about I don't know, like any, any other thing, any other present. How about shoes? How about handbags? How about jewelry? How about something like that? All right. I could also say, what about? That'd be the same way to do it. How about, what about? But you'll notice we can try to make things much shorter and easier because we don't need to say the whole sentence that that idea is all implied. Okay. All right. Nils is looking good over there. Or Annette, I should say. All right. Actually, not, I think I'll just call you Nils still. <laughs> I think I will, I will just like think about that the whole time. But let me see here. Make sure I got that correct. Let's see. All right, Annette. All right, I'll, I'll try, to, try to use that over there. All right, I can understand all words in the sentence, but it takes me some time to digest this information and grasp what is being conveyed to me. Yeah, uh, so this happens uh, typically the... I'm, when I'm giving these lessons, some people, it might be a little bit too easy. Other people, it might be too difficult. Uh, but hopefully, you can get at least a little bit of information from this and have it make sense. So don't worry if you don't understand everything here. I'm actually giving a lot of information in this lesson, uh, teaching quite a few different phrases. Uh, so even if you only remember one from, from this video, it's okay. Come back and watch it again later, and you will learn even more each time. So how about flowers? Uh, and then he says, no, I have already given her flowers many times. So what would be a different way of expressing this idea? So we've done something many, many times already. That's really the idea. So no, I've already done something many times. I'm going to write something up here, and if you have a thought or a different idea of a way we might express this, then go ahead and put it in the comments. So no, I have already given her flowers many times. All right. 
I mentioned before, we don't need to have the word already in there. It adds a little bit of emphasis, but it's not necessary. Uh, so no, I have given her flowers many times. I just erased this part. No, I have given her flowers many times is fine. But I'm trying to think of a more, or he is using actually a, uh, a more natural way of expressing this. Uh, so first, instead of no, I'm going to erase this whole thing here. So we don't say like, we, we don't have to repeat give flowers because that's already implied. That's already understood. So he said nah. Now, instead of saying no, this is a, a common way people will say it. it's like nah, like nah, nah. And, and the pronunciation is not so important. Uh, it, some people will have a more nasally sounding like nah, nah, or some people have a more relaxed sound like nah, nah, I don't care about that or nah, but it just means no, all right? It's just a casual way of saying this. So nah, I've done that to death. Nah, I've done that to death. Nah, I've done that to death. I've done that to death. So I've done that to death. To do something to death means you've already done something many, many times. And especially in this case, I've already given my wife so many flowers or I've, like I always give her flowers. It's just boring. I've done it to death. All right. So I, I did it so many times. I killed that thing. I've done it to death. I've done that thing to death. All right. <clears throat> Bogdan says, how to master phonetics uh, in English. Uh, if you click on the link, uh, don't spam the comments, though. Uh, if you click on the link in the description below this video, get Frederick. You can see the link down there, and that will show you exactly how to master phonetics uh, and pronunciation, listening and spelling. So anyone who would like to learn how to pronounce these things better, just get Frederick. Click on the link in the description below the video. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Vegas says, I can, can I pick your brain? I never have heard of this way of asking for opinion. Thanks. Yes, well, that's the point of this video, <laughs> to share new ways of expressing things. Uh, and again, if you, are, if you are not in a native environment or you're not getting a lot of native input, uh, like we give in Fluent for Life, if you're not getting that, uh, then you are going to miss a lot of these things in, uh, in real conversation. So can I pick your brain? I need an idea for my wife's birthday. How about flowers? Nah, I've done that to death. Nah, I've done that to death. I've done that to death, all right? Now this could apply to anything that you've done so many times, like, like oh, I've watched that movie to death, all right? I've watched that movie to death, or I played that game to death, all right? So anything you've done it, like so many times, you don't like doing it, I don't like playing it, or I don't like, you know, because you've done it so many times, uh, or even common expressions like, oh, people have used that to death. People have used that expression to death, done that to death. It just means they did it so many times or so much or so often that they killed that thing. All right. Hopefully everybody's getting it. It's a pretty good expression. Uh, but, you know, when I, when I hear things like this, like this is not the kind of thing you hear in a regular English lesson like in a textbook <laughs> but you will again like people are trying to be more expressive like no no I don't want to give flowers I've done that to death I'm so tired of that my wife is tired of that too by the way uh, so I've done that to death I've done that to death all right uh, let's see uh, Annette yes I, whenever I think Nils now I will think Annette all right I got you all right, uh, let's see, Tsubasa with the dap over there. Boom, gotcha. <laughs> it made its way all the way to Japan. Uh, yes, and says, welcome. Very useful to death, very useful expression. All right, uh, thank you. Frederick is the best. Yes, Tom, if you know other people who would enjoy it, please recommend the app. Also, uh, go to the app store, wherever you got that, and leave us uh, a comment. Just say, hey, the app is awesome and recommend it. Uh, Bogdan says, sorry for spam, just making sure you're seeing my comment. I was asking for a third time. Don't worry, I'm, I'm trying to go through them. Uh, Yasin's with a little heart over there. I just try Frederick right after this class. You'll enjoy it a lot. Oh, let's see, uh, it's like some other language I can't read. 
let's see, I don't have any writing and listening problems, but I he hesitate to speak. I have none to practice. Could you provide some advice to me? Uh, remember, Manisha, and this is for everybody else, that you don't improve by practicing your speaking. If you, if you think, and I know this sounds like weird advice because <laughs> everybody tells you you have to practice, but if you think about what speaking practice really is, what are you really doing when you practice speaking? The idea is that you repeat things because that's all it would be. So if I, like, let's say I have a thing like, how about, and I just repeat that, how about, how about, how about, how about. So I'm not really learning anything more uh, and what really stops me from speaking is doubt. So if I'm uncertain about grammar or vocabulary or pronunciation or anything else, that's what really will stop me from speaking. So instead of repeating things again and again and again, I need to get more examples or whatever will help me eliminate that doubt. And so th what I'm going through here is I'm, I'm going, I'm taking you through just a simple quick part of a conversation and helping you eliminate some doubt about particular things. So as I'm answering questions from people, I'm eliminating the doubt. So I call this a fluency trigger. Uh, this is kind of a longer version of that. Uh, but the idea, like this idea over here, so I'm giving you a kind of visual way of thinking about this idiom here of like picking someone's brain, okay? So I'm not choosing that, I'm actually like click, 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 I'm picking, I'm picking at your brain to try to get some information from you. So this is just a way of asking, can I have your opinion about something or can I get an idea or some kind of help for something? So can I pick your brain? And so we don't become better speakers by speaking. We actually become better speakers by getting lots of different examples that help us understand the language better. So once you understand, then you feel confident because you don't have doubt anymore, and then you speak, all right? So even if you are in a conversation with other people, uh, especially if you're talking with a native, uh, you really should be paying a lot of attention like that, where did I have that before about like paying attention to pay attention because the improvement will really come from listening to what the native person is saying to you. It's not from what you say, it's what the other person says to you, okay? So this is the opposite, of, uh, the opposite advice that you will normally get from people about like, you should just speak and that's how you will improve. But you don't really improve if you do that because just repeating things doesn't help you understand them better. You just need to get more information until you feel very confident about individual words and phrases, and then you will use those things fluently. So you don't need a practice partner. You just need to get lots of examples that help you understand something. You need to eliminate the doubt. That's when you start speaking. All right. That's my quick speech about that. All right. Um, let's see. Mom says, I usually hang out with friends to celebrate birthdays of each other. Yes, you would say each other. Each other. You don't need an S on the end. We send many hearts. That's right. Uh, Andy says, thanks very much. It's my pleasure. Hello, Mr. Drew. To death means, number one, I did it so many times. Well, yes, you could say it's, it's a way of talking about something being boring, but it also means that you've done that thing many times. All right. So it's not interesting anymore or people don't like it. So uh, the reason it's not boring, like just the meaning of boring by itself, is because I could watch a movie one time and that movie could just be a boring movie. I've only seen it one time. I wouldn't say, oh, I watched that movie to death. If I watched that movie to death, it means I've seen that movie a hundred times. So it's, it's more the idea that you've done something so many times, and that's why if you look at the, the original version of the, the textbook version of this conversation, where uh, my friend is saying, well, I've already given her flowers many times, all right? So that idea of I have already done that, done that thing many times, uh, so that, that's the more important part about doing something to death, all right? So it just means you've done it so many times, and because of that, now it's boring or not interesting or whatever. But the more important, the, the main idea of that phrase, to do something to death, means it's, it's, it's just been done so many times. It's overused uh, or it's cliched or any, anything else where it's just not interesting anymore. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Uh, <clears throat> And let's see, what's the best way to ask the cost of something? Is it correct to say, how much does this cost? So you would say, how much 
does this cost, so no S on the end of it, remember the, the subject verb agreement there, so how much does this cost, or you could say like this thing costs uh, however much it is, but yeah, you just how much is fine, how much, how much. Uh, Zekelembo says, how many languages do you speak? I speak English and Japanese. I know a little bit of uh, French and Spanish. A little bit. Uh, I'm from Bangladesh. Hi from Ukraine. Great, uh, Ukraine. Glad to see you here live again. Uh, I have worked to death, but my employer didn't even pay my salary. Yes, that's another excellent use of the expression. So just like we can take any verb really and say like I've done something to death. Like, oh, my boss is working me to death. My boss is working me to death. He's working me too much. It's like he's actually doing something that's, that's going to kill me. <laughs> And so you notice an, in, an interesting thing about conversations is people will exaggerate uh, just to make the, like the conversation or the speech more interesting. So it's the same idea. I, I'm actually saying I have done something many times, but I'm making it sound a bit more interesting like, oh, I've done that to death. I've done, it, I've done that thing to death. Okay. So same basic idea. Uh, you can say both of those. I have given my wife flowers many times, but this again, nah, I've done that to death. Nah, like nah, I don't want to do that. So especially this, this nah right here, we often use this when we're especially speaking casually. So you wouldn't want to talk with your boss like this unless you were very friendly with your boss. So your boss says, uh, hey, I need you to come into work tomorrow. And you say, nah, <laughs> you probably would not do that. But if you're talking with your friend and your friend says, oh, should we get pizza for dinner? You say, nah, I had, I had pizza yesterday. Okay. So that's where the, the nah rather than no comes from, okay? So that's the slight nuance there. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Well, what are her current interests? What are her current interests? So what's a better way to express this? Well, what are her current interests? Uh, let's erase this. So well, what are her current interests? <clears throat> and I can ask, well, what? she was she into lately nice and simple well what's she into lately all right so to be into so what is she into lately lately what is she into lately what is she into lately now, the reason we use lately instead of recently you could use recently uh, but lately uh, and this is, a, this is one of those uh, kind of tricky, tricky words where we would prefer to use lately. Uh, what's the best way to describe it? Well, like if, I, if I say, well, what's she into recently? I guess in this case, you really could use both. I think lately would sound more natural. Um, you would probably get more examples if you did a Google search for these. Uh, but there, there are times that, w w so this is a case where you could use lately or recently. Uh, but lately sounds a little bit more natural. I'm trying to think about the best reason to explain why that would be um, Just to help you understand that because there are times when you would not use both of them at the same time so an example of that might be uh, like uh, The company has been doing something um, Actually, yeah, I guess in, in this case you really could use either you really could use either I actually want to, I want to do a lesson. I think I, I did a lesson many years ago about like lately versus recently. Uh, and I'm, I can't think of something uh, immediately. I don't know. Maybe I'm still sick. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so the idea here is, so what is she into lately or what is she into recently? I would probably prefer lately. Yeah, just like a personal, personal preference, I guess. Um, but you could use either one of those. But the more important thing here is what is she into? So to be interested in, what is she into? Okay. So what are her hobbies or what movies is she watching or something like that? What is she into lately? What is she into recently? All right. Let me go back and see if anybody. All right. Let's see. So to death means a lot like I'm scared to death, by the way. Well, uh, Bruno, in that case, like 
you wouldn't be talking about there's there's like being scared to death and then doing something to death. And so I'm not necessarily scared of something like this example here. So no, I've given my wife many, many flowers. I'm not scared about anything. So death, it, it can be used when we're talking about something else, but it's a, a completely different usage of the word, all right? So done something to death rather than to be scared to death. Like you could be scared to death of doing something to death. <laughs> you could say that. Um, and that would mean like you don't want to do something too many times. That's what that would mean. I'm scared to death of doing something to death. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. I like the way, I like your way to explain, says Jerema. I really enjoy your class. Glad to hear it. Saludos. Uh, what's she into right now? Yes, you could also say that as well. So what's she into right now? Uh, lately or recently implies a little bit more time span. So if we just say like right now, it could, it, I mean, it, and this is, this is a, it's not a specific idea where right now is like only immediately. It could be, you know, within the past week or something as well when we talk about like what is your wife into that's why it's better to say something like lately or recently because that extends that amount of time it just makes it a little bit more general so what is she into recently or what is she into lately um, <clears throat> and uh, and when we when we're using this again you could say right now uh, what is she into now another way of, like what is she into now uh, or right, right now. Right now is even more specific. It's like, the, like, what is she doing today or the past week? Something like that. But we can be a bit more general or have a bit more time. So what is she into lately? What is she into lately? Uh, let's see. All right, Muslim, please give specific class for IELTS speaking. Yeah, there are plenty of people who do that already. Just find those speakers on YouTube. Uh, on to you would not use on to you say what are you what are you into like what is the thing you are you're kind of inside it uh, almost almost like you are you are a part of that thing all right so you, you you really get into your work I really get into something to get excited about that thing I'm not kind of sitting on the top of it I'm, I'm inside it I really like that thing uh, Vegas says watch Drew's videos to death if you want to start your new life with <laughs> Yes, so, so you could, it is possible to watch my videos to death, but hopefully you don't watch them too much. Well, go ahead if you like. But <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Hassan says, who want to practice his English with me? Remember, the practicing doesn't come from you. You don't need to, like, meet someone to practice your English. You just need to get more examples that help you understand the language better. After you feel confident, that's when you can look for people to speak with. And in that case, you don't really need a speaking practice partner. Just find... People who are sharing your interests. Not an says, thank you. Let's see. Uh, her current interests are traveling to new countries and sightseeing. So I guess a trip to Paris could be a great idea. Yes. Uh, the, the wife, his wife may, might prefer that. I don't know. I don't know his wife well. <laughs> so I can't say. But yes, if she's into that, I mean, you, you could do that. Maybe she's into travel or she's into cooking or something, whatever that is. Uh, but my friend says, I'm not sure. <laughs> so he doesn't really know. And that's why I say, well, you, you, she must have said something. You need to be paying attention to, to what your wife is doing. All right. So let's look at this phrase right here. I'm not sure what's a different way we could express this. All right. So a native uh, definitely would say, I'm not sure. Uh, but my friend did not use that expression. What did he say instead? He said, and this is pretty, <laughs> a pretty common, pretty casual expression. Beats me. Beats me. <laughs> I think I've actually used this on, uh, on, I've talked about this before. This is also in a, uh, in a book that my, my daughters like. So there's a, a character uh, that, like the one lady is saying, hey, do you do you know about uh, taking care of kids? And she's like, well, beats me. I don't I don't know anything about that. So I don't know or I'm not sure. Uh, beats me is really like you have no idea at all. All right. So I'm not sure uh, is it, it implies there's a little bit more certainty there. So like I kind of know, but remember that people exaggerate. So 
if someone says, I'm not sure about something, then they probably, they probably don't know it all. <laughs> and this is a, this is a, it's a way of using the language. Like another thing, like you've probably heard this before. Uh, let me see if this fits up here. Uh, what, and this is, this is just a different example. So what does X mean exactly? Or you will hear, we can move exactly over here. Like what exactly does something mean, all right? <clears throat> now the reason, I think I've talked about this in, in videos before, I, I definitely have in Fluent for Life. Um, but this idea here, this is, a, this is more a psychology thing about communication, where if I say what does something mean? Like what does uh, Rubicon mean? Just a word, You're like what does that mean? Uh, if I say, what does that mean, it makes me sound less intelligent because I don't know a word. And it's okay, really, if you don't know a word. But uh, the point is, when people are, when people are communicating, uh, they, they sound more intelligent if they use the word exactly. Because it implies that you know a little bit about something already. <laughs> so if I say, like, like if, we, if we imagine how much... Like I know about like a, a particular word over here from zero to 100. I'm sorry I'm taking time to explain this, but it's, it's important to understand these, like the, the deeper ideas about communication. And you probably have things that are similar in your language as well. Uh, so let's say there's a word like, uh, I don't know, now I can't, I can't think of just like a random word. <laughs> What's a random word? Uh, let's say... Invite, just invite. So the random word is invite, uh, and maybe I don't know. I don't know what that means at all. I don't know the word invite. I don't know the meaning of invite at all. So if I say, "What does invite mean?" What does invite mean? It means like I'm I'm kind of stupid, <laughs> or uh, or I'm ignorant. It just means I can't. I don't know what something means. So if I say what does uh, invite mean? It means basically zero. I don't know anything about it. But if I say what exactly does invite mean, it means I, I maybe have like some idea about what that means. <laughs> so this is a, a subtle, interesting thing uh, in, in speaking when, when people will use this word here. What exactly does that mean? What exactly? What do you mean exactly? All right. Uh, because it means uh, typically it, it could mean that they actually know something, uh, but maybe they don't, they don't know anything actually. <laughs> All right. So I just thought this, this was an, an interesting thing. You will hear natives use this a lot. Whenever people use uh, exactly in a conversation, often it's because they have like no, uh, like no particular, uh, maybe they, they don't know like anything about that particular thing. So like what, it, what exactly is biology? <laughs> or like, you know, any, it, it could be anything like that. If I say what is biology, it means I, I'm, I'm just saying I don't know anything about it. But what exactly is that? <laughs> I sound a bit more intelligent, a bit more knowledgeable, and it's just trying to make myself seem better about that, all right? Or like less stupid or less ignorant, uh, whatever. All right, Apart, pardon that, that little, little uh, interlude there. All right, uh, let's see. All right, we got a bunch of a bunch of things while I'm talking over here. Okay, what is she? Okay, we got that. All right, all right. Uh, our boss always picks our brains to death to see what we are into. Yes, <laughs> yes, you could use it that way. Like he's, your boss is like, if your boss has no idea, he's always picking your brain to death. Like he doesn't think of anything himself. You know, uh, Conan says, Drew, is there any difference between American accent and Canadian accent? Uh, because there's a lot of Canadian teachers on YouTube, and I get nervous because I think they're huge the, I think they're huge I don't know what you mean by that the words rather than American well Canada and um, uh, in America are quite similar and maybe some people will have a thicker accent I mean we, we would call it an accent they, they just call it how they speak <laughs> so it's, it's always like an accent to the other person um, but they're quite similar 
and you will have many people like you can't really tell. But if you're an American or a Canadian, usually you can tell the difference between like a Canadian speaker and an American speaker. I remember actually a Canadian told me a joke many years ago. I'll tell you the joke right now. It's a it's actually about Canadian accent. <clears throat> uh, and so this was uh, different countries were getting together to, to think of what their names would be. Uh, and they, they were just like picking, they have, a, this is a kind of common thing in, in America, um, but like, or I, I, actually many people do this, like you have a bowl or a hat and you just have letters in there and you pick them out and that's gonna be the name of your country. So the first guy is gonna pick the name of his country from the letters in the hat and, and the first letter he says, okay, you, S and A, and then he says, okay, our country is going to be called the USA. <laughs> so the first guy pulls out those and he, he gets the, uh, he says like USA. And the next guy, let me erase USA. And he says, he pulls out the cards, he says C A N A D A. <laughs> so it means like, Canada, <laughs> C A N A D A. So you will have that like A like at the at the end and the uh, the end of a lot of sounds like that. So that's one difference that that we don't have in the United States. A, eh? all right, all right. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, all right. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Rubic Rubicon is the name of a river, but we we also have the, like, there's a, a more figurative usage of it like where we're, we're going to do something like from the idea of this crossing the Rubicon, uh, meaning we're going to do something and like we can't go back after that. So now like we commit to doing something, I'm crossing the Rubicon, I'm, I'm actually going to do something uh, that I can't go back on, all right? So I'm, I'm making a, a decision, all right. All right, yes, the ambulance is back in. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. So again, when you're getting different accents, like what we do in Fluent for Life is we actually have you listen to different speakers from different parts of the world so you can listen to their different accents and get used to them. All right, so that's, again, we prepare people for all of that. So tired uh, could be beats me. Well, uh, if, you're, if you're talking about being tired, that's actually I'm beat. If you're talking about you feeling physically tired, like, oh, I feel beat or I'm beat. It's like almost like, you know, the work or the day or something has been hitting you all day long. And now, now you're tired. I'm beat. Oh, I'm beat. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mom, it says, uh, let's see. Oh, wait, or maybe I skipped that. Let's see. All right, uh, Ayu says, uh, you're my favorite teacher. I've been watching your videos since 2017. Thank you for all your hard work. It's my pleasure. All right, let's see. Hello, teacher. I'm late today. I saw, all right. Suzanne says, hey there, can't sleep, so I thought I'd come here. Nice seeing you, Drew. Nice to see you there. Solve it, kind of American accent. Canadians resemble each other beats me. Let's see. Kind of no problem, but if you'd accept that free offer that you would have changed your life, but now the offer is not, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Uh, but keep it clean over here. I don't need any trouble in the comments. What exactly do you mean by saying this? I don't know, I don't know, well, now, now, now I'm confused over here. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see, Fabio, what's, uh, what's, all right, Fantasigo, what does COVID-19 mean exactly? Yes, <laughs> that's a good example. All right, so I am beat means I am tired. Yes, that's correct, so I am beat. So remember, it, like, the, the way non-natives will learn the language is they will take a word and then they will typically get a translation of it. So like, let's say uh, I, could, I could use the word like, like to hit something or to beat something like in Japan would be like, or Japanese is like tataka. Um, that's one example, so one way I could express that. Uh, but if I'm learning it in English, like there are different uses of the word and I hear those different uses in, in different situations. Uh, yes, Suzanne, it's like I'm exhausted. And so you can hear a beat like to beat a drum, but then you also hear like I'm beat. It's like, oh, like I'm kind of 
like I feel kind of like hit in a certain way. Like I'm tired, like I'm getting very, uh, very exhausted about something. And so sometimes there is a meaning that's it's connected like that. And sometimes you just have words that have completely different meanings, like the word trunk, for example. So a trunk, this could mean like the nose of an elephant, uh, or it could mean a box for travel. So there are sometimes the same word actually has just completely different meanings. But the important thing here is that as you get all these different examples, it really helps you understand the core meanings of words uh, so you can use them more naturally and more confidently. Uh, let's see. So kind of says, Drew, when I read an article or a book, I get bored as fast as my brain won't imagine it. Is that a question? I don't understand. Um, but if you're, you should just, if you're talking about reading things, unless you have to read it for work or for school or something, you should read something you enjoy. Find something you're interested in, especially if you're trying to learn English by doing that. All right, let's continue. So we got beats me. Uh, and then she must have said something. She must have said something. What's a different way we could express that? She must have said something. And here we go. She must be dropping hints. All right, to drop hints. Now, to drop hints, if you think about like, like women, imagine this situation. It's this woman's, like his wife's, birthday coming up. So she's probably dropping hints, meaning like here's a hint about something. She doesn't want to say it directly. Like, hey, you should take me to Paris or you should do this or buy this thing. She will probably drop a hint like, you know, I'd really like a new something. I really want a new pair of shoes. Or I really want to go on a, a trip or something like that. So she might not say it directly, but she will drop some hints, drop some hints, some dropping hints. So you could uh, give a hint, you could also say that, like she must be giving hints, but dropping hints, this is a specific expression for just kind of like laying out little, little crumbs, something like that, where your wife is telling you what she wants, even though she doesn't want to say it directly. Uh, and so your, your wife is dropping some kind of hint about that. All right, she's dropping hints. So she must be dropping hints, or she's probably dropping hints, something like that. She must be dropping hints. Pretty easy to understand. So this is one way of saying this. There are more, but I just wanted to teach this one specific thing or, uh, because it came up in the conversation. She must be dropping hints. She must be dropping hints. All right. And then the last one, you should pay closer attention. Uh, and this one is, I'm just going to replace this. You better. You better is a very common uh, way of expressing that you should do something or I recommend you do something, but this is a very native and natural way of saying this. Often, like, you should do something, it sounds a little bit more formal. Uh, you can say that, like, you should pay attention, but you better pay attention. You better pay attention. You better pay attention. Uh, to drop a hint on or over, you know, well, you just say like to drop drop hints. You don't need to add add any preposition to that. To drop a hint, my wife is dropping hints. Typically, dropping hints about something. So my wife is dropping hints about what she wants for her birthday. All right, so she's dropping hints. Oh, you better pay attention. You better do your homework. You better get up early. You better do this. You better do that. You better. You better. All right or he better, or I better, or we better. Now, typically you will have like the, the longer construction of this is like you had better, you had better do something. It's the same idea, but remember, uh, like typically in conversations, if we understand, like I'm talking to my friend here, uh, I can say you better pay attention, or you had better pay attention, uh, but I don't need to say like you had better pay closer attention. I guess I could say that, but just pay attention. You better pay attention. You better pay attention. But you better, this is very common, uh, especially when talking about uh, like children needing to do something, like children need to do uh, whatever that is. You better do your homework. 
You better, you better be nice or there's going to be trouble. You better be nice. All right. So we don't, it's, it's, it's a little bit stronger than you should, but it's also more relaxed and more casual. You better pay attention. All right. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's talking about for the future, but like the future also implies right now. So like you better, like you should be doing that right now. Okay. You better pay attention. So it means like we, we can't really say this for the past. Like it's better if you had paid attention. <laughs> we could say that. So it's better if you had paid attention, but that's a, a slightly different usage of better. All right. You better do this. All right. You better pay attention. You better pay attention. All right. Uh, let's see. All right, Laurent, nice to see you there. Good evening to the best teacher in the world. You're too kind. All right, got other people talking to themselves, I think, or each other. Diana says, Drew, you are the greatest English teacher that I've ever seen because you know what you're teaching us. <laughs> well, I hope so. I, I do my best. I could, it, some, sometimes it's difficult because all of these live videos, I have to think on the spot. I have to think on my feet about examples. And often I like to take my time. That's why when I'm making lessons, I actually spend a lot of time uh, preparing things, especially for videos I make because there's a lot of planning to make sure that I can eliminate the doubt for people. I have to anticipate what kind of questions people have, uh, but it is more difficult for me. I have to think more. Uh, I'm still recovering a little bit from my, uh, from my, my flu a little bit, a little bit recently. Uh, let's see. I'm effortlessly understanding you. I effortlessly understand you. Is this because you're explaining things like parents to kids or I'm actually good in English? Well, it, I mean, it's both. But my job as a teacher is to make the language understandable because that's when you become more confident and eliminate the doubt and you feel like speaking. So yes, like remember that you become fluent in individual words and phrases as you understand them. So you might understand me and you're used to me and you can learn some new vocabulary, but maybe you hear someone else, like a person in a movie or a native speaker somewhere and you don't understand them as well, but that's okay. And it just means you just need more practice listening to that kind of speech or maybe that kind of accent, something like that. So, uh, so I guess your, your, the answer to the, to your question is yes and no. <laughs> so yes, you are like getting good, but also, you know, like it, it's, it's, it, you get fluent one piece at a time. All right. So if you understand one person but don't understand someone else, don't feel bad about that. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, you said, hi, teacher. I have one problem with English. The problem is I can't expand my vocabulary. Why not? Uh, first of all, I, I, would, I would question, I would recommend... I would actually say you better, so you better uh, focus on the vocabulary you already know uh, rather than trying to learn new vocabulary. And I promise you, you will actually expand your vocabulary as you focus on the words you already know. So you, you look at what we're, what we're covering here today, I'm actually trying to go very deep into a few different words and expressions just so you understand them better. All right. So my goal is not to teach you 2000 new words in one video because you will probably not remember that and you won't really feel confident. You will still have doubts and questions and concerns about that information. But if I can focus on a few things, help you understand at least one of them really well uh, and hopefully you understand more of that. Um, but if, if you do that, you will feel a little bit more fluent. So you should feel more fluent because you feel more certain and confident about the vocabulary or the grammar or whatever it is we're covering. All right. But that's the goal of each one of my videos. You should leave the video, uh, feeling more confident and certain. Uh, let's see here. Damn you, YouTube. Why you always have to, <laughs> I should be able to go back to where I was. That would be a, a nice uh, inter interface thing here. To drop a hint on or over or about what is the correct prepositions. Yeah, well, you, you, I mean, yeah, I think I mentioned or answered this question already, but you would typically drop, you might drop a hint uh, about, typically we would, we would say that. Solve it, uh, Danilo, I'm in hot water. People tease me, annoy me, hurt me, break my heart. What about you? Uh, let's see, ought to... Fabio says, hey, teacher, what's the difference between a typhoon, a hurricane, and a tornado? Uh, a hurricane is in the Atlantic Ocean, and a typhoon is in the Pacific Ocean, and a tornado is on land. 
Um, that's the basic difference. Uh, so typhoon, like it comes like from the, like both, I, I don't know if uh, Chinese also uses it, but like the typhoon is a, the Japanese word for that. Uh, but it's, it's basically the same thing. <clears throat> Yusuf says, uh, I can recommend you something really good for fluency. Let's see, you better pay attention. Sounds like advice, but sounds for the past for me. Well, it's, it's, it's talking about now and for the future. I think I'm repeating myself here because I got stuck on these comments here. Uh, I think the children good more than us. Let's see. Kind of advice and tips. Let's see. Mr. Drew, you're awesome. I'm sure you only can be a reason behind my fluency in the future. I request you please make videos regularly. Uh, you should get Fluent for Life. That's like hundreds of videos that are already, it, the whole system is, is right there waiting for you. All right, so you don't need to wait for me to make anything new. Uh, Manish is from Nepal. Uh, what's the difference you think between imply and infer? Uh, well, imply typically means like it's coming from someone. Like I imply something by saying a particular thing. Like, like let's say I think like, yeah, that shirt, that shirt looks a little bit tight around your stomach. If I say that, I'm implying you're fat. All right. <laughs> uh, but like I, the inferring is more what the other person does as they're like listening to that. Like the other person infers from what I said that they're fat. All right, so I'm implying something and they are inferring something. So they are kind of trying to get some information from me and I'm trying to give some information. All right, that's a slight, slight difference in there. I, I don't want to spend a long time uh, going over the difference, but that's how you would think about that. Oh, and Tom says, a pera pera. Let's see, and Zakin says, hi, Drew, do you have any books about how to become more fluent or something like that. You don't need any more books to become fluent. You just need to eliminate the doubt that stops you from speaking. That's it. Uh, and if you'd like to learn more about that, just click on the link in the description below for Fluent for Life. Is said, can you please tell me what I can do, bro, please? Tell me what I can do. Uh, well, about what? <laughs> uh, Lewis says, you have to improve your high frequency vocabulary, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, but it's like flu like high, high fluent, high high frequency vocabulary uh, is certainly very useful, and we cover uh, all of that in Fluent for Life. But it's also frequent vocabulary for particular situations, and so you need to think about that for your own life. Uh, this is why people get to the program uh, and they focus on specific things like you need language for business. You will also learn how to apply that same vocabulary to other situations and even how to take other situations and apply that to business. Uh, but the point is you should be focusing on the frequently used vocabulary that you need for your life. Uh, let's see, are these phrases bad to use if you want to sound professional? No, these aren't particularly bad. I mean, the only thing like, nah, Nah, that's, that's a little less professional and you probably shouldn't write that uh, unless, I mean, but again, it, it could be a professional situation where you have uh, even a, like a casual friendship, like you have friends or coworkers and you speak with them casually even at work, all right? So it's not like there's only one way of communicating for a particular situation. All right. But in general, uh, yes, like this, this kind of vocabulary, you can be using this in a professional or a casual situation. And the more examples you get, so this is why it's a good idea to pay attention to what other people are doing. So we get our kind of clues. Other people will drop hints about the kind of vocabulary you can use. All right, so if you're in the workplace, you listen to how people are speaking or how the boss speaks, is the boss speaking more casually, uh, then you can use that more casually as well. Will you drop a hint uh, about what your next lesson will be? So drop a hint about what the next lesson will be about. So in that, in that sense, like we would probably just say like what your next lesson will cover. Uh, actually, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. You, you tell me. What would you like uh, the next lesson to be about? <laughs> you tell me. Uh, like, uh, 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 right. Sir, so many idioms in English and it's sometimes confusing. Yes. Uh, it's not really necessary to learn a lot of idioms. You can actually become a fluent speaker just by learning a lot of 
basic and simple vocabulary, and that's really all you need to be able to speak. But this video is just an example of how to extend that. I know a lot of people are interested in learning more vocabulary, even though I tell them, hey, it's much better to improve the vocabulary you already know. <laughs> but people are always trying to learn new words and phrases. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Dan says, teacher, could you give us some techniques uh, or some tips in other understanding? All native English speaker, please. Uh, well, that's what we do in Fluent for Life. So the, the basic idea for understanding different native speakers is you just need exposure to those different speakers. So if you want to understand people from like the southern part of the United States or a New York accent or something, you need to get exposure to those different kinds of people. That's how it works. So that's, there's, no, there's no getting around that idea. It's, it's just what you have to do. Uh, Roger says, let me get this straight. You're saying if I focus on the words that I already know, I grow up my vocabulary? Yes. So like right now, you're using something like I will grow up my vocabulary. Like, so you're, you're using those words, but you're not using them correctly. I understand what you mean, but like you would, you would say like you increase or just grow your vocabulary. So it means like you, you know the vocabulary, but you don't know it well enough that you, you, could, you could actually review that vocabulary more and you would feel more confident about using it because you'd use it correctly. All right. So lots of people, if you look at the comments in these videos, lots of people are explaining things, but it's not 100% correct. Most people have some kind of errors in what they're saying, and that means they have a question or doubt or something about that vocabulary. And this is for the words even that they already know. So remember that you go through different phases as you learn. So when you first hear something, you're getting exposed to it. As you hear it more and more, you get more aware about that. You become like, you can recognize that information or that vocabulary when you hear it, but maybe you still have some kind of uncertainty about it. And that's how you need to get uh, basically eliminating those doubts in order to move up to the fluent level for that particular vocabulary. So the, the trap that a lot of learners get in is they, they, they think they need to know more words to become fluent. But you don't become fluent by learning more words because why would you become fluent by learning more words uh, if, if you don't actually speak fluently with the vocabulary you already know? <clears throat> so as an example, let's say I know 100. Let me fit this in here somewhere. My Canada example. <clears throat> So if I know 100 words, for example, but I still can't speak very well, then why would 1,000 words help me? All right. Now remember, I'm talking about knowing vocabulary uh, really well, like knowing it well enough that you feel confident about speaking, that you won't feel uh, like worried about mistakes in pronunciation or grammar or something like that. So adding more vocabulary doesn't actually help you improve unless you're actually feeling fluent in that vocabulary. And this is why most learners, many learners I would say, uh, they, can con they can continue to learn new vocabulary for years and years and years. So they watch lots of YouTube videos. Oh, it's like here's 500 expressions or whatever. Here's like a thousand expressions for you. But you don't really uh, actually improve unless you improve the fluency of that individual vocabulary. Okay, so if I learn some words, but I don't really understand them well enough, I'm wasting my time. It's much better to learn a few things, spend my time really understanding them, and then as I do that, then the, my, my, my fluency actually increases much faster. Okay, so you don't need to know more words to get fluent. You actually need just one word to, be, to really be fluent, like let's say I need to, I need to be, give a, a greeting to someone and I say hello. If I know how to say that correctly, smoothly, with good pronunciation, I know how to respond, I don't have any doubt or any worry in my mind about saying it, it's getting fluent in one particular word or phrase at a time. So I learn how to say hello and I understand when to say that, I can say it correctly, confidently. Now I learn other words. Okay, but I get fluent in these things, and I know it seems like this might take longer, but think about people who study the language for many years and still can't speak. That's a long time of continuing to struggle. And they think they need to know more words. If I just know more words, I will be a better speaker. 
but then they can't speak. All right, and it's it's not because they they like don't know a lot of words. It's just they don't know those words very well. They still have doubts or worries about that. And typically, people are learning English as a second language, so they're learning English through their native language. And when you do that, then you really have lots of doubts, and you're translating in your head when you speak. <clears throat> But if you look at how children learn, they focus on a few things, and they're getting lots and lots and lots of examples, okay? And so they feel very confident that they will speak correctly, then they start speaking, and then, wow, like, that's how they get fluent very quickly, all right? So you can do the exact same thing, and you can actually get fluent faster than a native child if you just get lots of input the same way a child does, all right? But the goal really is to eliminate the doubt. It's not just to, like, put lots of English into your brain. It's to eliminate the doubt that you have about vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation. All right. I repeat this often because it's the most important thing about language learning. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's see. That's a good expression, though. Let me get this straight. Good work. Uh, let's see. Juan says, hi, my first time here. I want to improve my English. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, there's a lot of people who can speak English like a native, but if you ask them about grammar, they get stuck why that's happened. Well, a lot of people can't explain what the grammar rules are because they're not, they, they understand how the grammar rules work. It's like using a toilet. Lots of people understand how to use a toilet, but they couldn't explain to you how the plumbing works. You know, same idea. And so if a native speaker recognizes how the, how the rules work, uh, they just do it naturally and automatically. But they can't tell you what a past participle is okay you know and so it like it, it just shows you that it's not necessary to know that information and typically when when natives uh if you ask a native like why something is they probably won't be able to tell you the way a teacher would about an explanation about grammar or something but if you say what does a word mean they will give you just some examples of well, when would we use it? We would use it in this example, and this example, and this example, and this is typically how natives are thinking about the language. So they're not thinking about rules, they're thinking about what vocabulary do we use in what situation, okay? I think I talked in last week's video about, um, what was that, like the like present, present perfect tense? Uh, and instead of talking, explaining about it, about it like as a rule, <clears throat> you're more trying to think about what is the situation we're describing. So as an example, uh, I can talk about myself like I have short hair or I have two ears or I have green eyes. Uh, I'm describing myself and these are things you can see or I can talk about like my shirt. I have a red shirt or something. Um, and I can also talk about the experiences I have. So I have uh, played baseball, okay? So like playing baseball, I can talk about the activity, like I played baseball many years ago, but I can talk about that also as a part of who I am. So I have played baseball, I have that thing, all right? And so we, we, we can talk about this as like, oh, this is the, the present perfect or whatever. Uh, but instead of talking about the grammar rules, natives don't really think about that. If you ask a native, what is the present perfect? They probably can't tell you but they do know how to use the present perfect correctly because they're just, they're thinking about it as, as like vocabulary connected with situations, not trying to memorize rules, all right? So that's why you will get uh, people who can't answer questions like that. <clears throat> um, I think, man, did I, I thought I skipped over a question asking about my dad if he's still alive a while back, and yes, he is, just to answer that. Uh, Let's see, about phrases or advanced vocabulary. Oh, are you talking about like, um, like videos? Well, we've got plenty of those already. Drew, do you have monsoon weather? Well, yeah, we, we do get, uh, we have like a typhoon season. We actually, we kind of have like two of them here. Uh, and it's a little bit rainy now, but no typhoon. But my friend dropped a hint that he will buy a Ferrari this summer. Wow, pretty cool. Uh, idioms are so interesting many times. Yes, there are lots of interesting idioms, and if you understand how they work, then they're not really very complicated. Uh, yeah, it can help if you feel confident. Yes, you'd say it can help, not it can helps. It can help. And so here, that's an example of, like, this is basic 
uh, subject verb agreement, but it's still incorrect, which means that you're still not understanding or you're probably not feeling very confident about that. And I don't want to make anyone feel bad, like I'm singling you out, like, oh no, there's an error in your grammar or pronunciation or whatever just by looking at comments. Um, but I'm trying to help people remind them that, look, like you're using basic things incorrectly, so why would you try to learn more difficult things? Focus on the things that you still don't understand that you're not using correctly, really understand them well, and then all the, the advanced stuff becomes very easy after that. Uh, it's finished your live stream. Well, I'll be finishing uh, soon, Minori. But your no problem with pronunciation is that, or my problem with pronunciation is that I get influenced by the way different speakers pronounce certain words. I can't really stick to one particular way. This gives me a headache and I end up stutter. Get, get Frederick. Just click on the link in the description below this video. Get that and it will teach you how to do it. You can listen to me pronounce uh, thousands of words and, and learn how to pronounce them. Uh, do you know what take a rain check means? Yes, it just means do something later, a rain check. <clears throat> so the, uh, like, and here, here's a perfect example of like an English lesson. So a typical lesson, either you get a definition of something or you get a translation of that. So the student asks, what is a rain check? And I say, oh, it just means to do something later. Now, if I stop the lesson right there, then you probably will like, okay, I, I, I guess I understand, but I haven't really eliminated the doubt. So let me give you a little bit of history, a little bit of story. This is the fluency trigger that helps you understand the vocabulary, so you eliminate the doubt. So the idea for this comes from people, maybe you go to a baseball game or something like that, uh, but if there's rain, then the game gets canceled, and you get a little check, like a little ticket, to come back for another day. So you get a rain check uh, for another game. You can come back and watch it for free later. So that's where the idea of a rain check comes from. Uh, but when you understand that, then we can apply that to other things, like my uh, doctor's appointment or something. Well, I can't come uh, this weekend, but uh, let me take a rain check. All right, so that means let me come back, let me apply that to a different time. Okay, so that's the difference between just getting like a quick regular English as a second language lesson versus getting a fluency trigger that helps you understand something. Hopefully that makes sense. But the point is, uh, if I can help you eliminate the doubt and really understand something, then you will feel much more confident about speaking. Uh, all right, it's 3.08 for me, ha uh ha. -huh. Well, hopefully get some sleep over there. Do you think that exams like TOEFL really measure the level of English? Uh, well, they measure your ability to take the test. I'm sure, I mean, you have to be able to speak a little bit, especially if they have a speaking test, like a speaking part of the test. But uh, the way people speak in those tests is going to be different from how people speak in a regular conversation. So the only thing that can really test you is how you are in the real world. So if I go to a Japanese class, and I sit and I study and I listen to the textbook and examples and things like that, it will be a very different situation than uh, how I am in the real world. So if I can't really understand people in the real world, then it, like you see there's, there's that, that disconnect between the lesson and the real world. And this is what I'm, I'm showing you with this uh, lesson today. So that's why we're contrasting how a textbook might present the English and how the native language would express it. Uh, more lessons like this one where textbook language altered into the casual one. Good job. Yeah. Uh, again, we, we do this in Fluent for Life as well. But yeah, it's, I, I do this sometimes in email lessons also. Uh, you can advise your friend giving a wife. Yeah. So you can, uh, you can recommend to your friend. We wouldn't say you can advise. You could say you can give advice or you can advise, advise your friend. Uh, like advise your friend that he should give his wife a watch. I have around 500 words or more, but I can't use it. Okay, then go back and review what you know. Zakin says, Drew, how many hours per day to practice listening to have real improvement to understand English natives? Uh, well, if, it depends on what you're listening to. If you're listening to real examples of native speakers and you understand what you're learning, then you will improve really quickly. But if you're just listening to traditional test prep information or textbook English, that kind of thing, it will take a lot longer. Uh, but you, again, you, you improve uh, in individual words and phrases as you understand them better. 
Uh, Dana says, teacher, I would like you to make an English class where the students can react speaking with you. Uh, I've, I've done that occasionally, but it's not really necessary for you to speak with me. It's more important that you understand what you're listening to. Uh, and you can still ask, uh, ask questions if you have them here. Low budget stuff says, do you think the best way learning English on YouTube is to stop watching how to learn English type videos? <laughs> well, there, obviously there's, there's, a, there's value in getting lessons where you're, it's like a controlled environment where you're understanding things, but you also have to add to that more information and more real examples of natives speaking. So this is why we created Fluent for Life. So we want to have like me being able to explain things well because I'm good at that, but also you get to see how native speakers are actually communicating. So we're taking like all of the fluency triggers, you need to really understand the language, and then you get to hear lots of different examples of native speakers with different accents from different countries, and you get to see them actually speaking. So whether you're in the program or not, this is what you have to do, and you can do this by yourself on YouTube. It's just more difficult without having someone there to explain it. So like if I were trying to learn by myself and I'm not in a program or something, and really for me, uh, this is how I have to learn Japanese because I'm not aware of anybody who teaches English or teaches Japanese the way I teach English. Um, but it's more about like, uh, instead of me looking for uh, like Japanese lessons for English speakers, I'm looking at like, Japanese content for children or Japanese content for teenagers or Japanese content for adults. So I, I listen to content or watch TV shows or whatever that are for native speakers. Or I, or I sit in a park or something and I listen to people talk. So just getting actual input from actual native speakers. So I don't, I don't have like a program like I created for people. I have to structure that for myself. So it can be frustrating and difficult because I don't have people to explain something. I, I can't listen to somebody's conversation and I, and I interrupt them and say, oh, excuse me, I'm listening to your conversation right now. What did you mean by that? <laughs> uh, but I can maybe take something and I'll write it down or something like, oh, that's an interesting word. And that's how I'm teaching myself Japanese. Um, so it is possible to do that. So you should uh, like find some information on YouTube, like learn about that thing, but spend more time with just the actual native content about that thing, whatever that is. So I, I made a video about how to make espresso in English, and it gives four different examples of other native speakers talking about making espresso. And so you can hear how different natives talk about that. And each time you're, you're getting a new, uh, like a new perspective on the vocabulary that helps you understand it. So some of the vocabulary is used again and again. Other things will be new, but as you, as you keep getting all this, you're, you're kind of improving your fluency in layers. Uh, and so that's how you would do it. So you don't have to stop watching people, but I would watch uh, like get maybe a few lessons and then try to use that information about something. So if you watch a video, like if I have a video about, I don't know, getting, like if I talk about the word get or something like that, like you can actually find YouTube videos that are talking about getting a present or getting something for your birthday or whatever. And you will hear people use that word get. And as you learn that, your brain will be paying attention for these specific words that you hear in conversations. So people like, and this is why, this is exactly why we structure Fluid for Life the way it is. So each lesson set is focusing on a particular grammar point so that your mind is getting lots and lots and lots of review of that thing in different ways, all right? So you don't need to spend time practicing speaking. Uh, you don't need to watch a lot of lessons, but you do need all, all of that input that really helps you understand the language better, all right? Um, Let's see. All right, that really triggered. Glad to hear it. All right, uh, thank you very much for the great way of teaching. It's my pleasure. Let's play now. Take a rain check to your study. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you, Drew. The lesson helped me. Glad to hear it. Uh, sir, where are you from? I'm from Chicago in the United States. Uh, grow up is different from increase. I got my mistake there. I better use increase next time. Well, you can remember, like, you can grow something. Like, I'm just like growing growing something like there there's a difference between and, and again this is the whole point of really focusing on vocabulary because as you you realize you don't know it very well and that's not a bad thing it's more like 
wow, there's so much more I can learn about that. So let's look at the word grow for a minute because you, know, you did a good job recognizing an error and you want to improve, so I want to encourage that. Uh, I'm gonna erase some of this over here. Again, if you would like to look at both versions of the conversation, just go in the comments section below this video. You can see the uh, kind of pre-version or the um, uh, like the textbook version and the native version. All right, so let's look at just very simply, if we have a word like grow versus growing up, like anything that grows, it can, it can increase in size. But we can have like increase in size, or we could have increase in number. So when we talk about growing a vocabulary, we're talking about increasing the number of it, all right? But when we're talking about something growing up, typically growing up is talking about increasing in size. So if we want to talk about like a child growing up over time, it's like think about a plant that's getting bigger. All right, it's actually increasing in size. It's not increasing in number, it's increasing in size. And so this is where we talk about growing up. And so as you focus on a word like this and you get different examples that help you compare, okay, so grow up, like I wouldn't grow up my vocabulary because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like making my vocabulary larger. I mean, I am, but I'm like, we're, we're talking about the number of words that I know. All right, so it's not like increasing like the size of an animal or a plant or a child or whatever. That's where something would grow up. Or you can think about like a city getting bigger over time, like the city is growing up. All right, so something uh, we can typically just use grow by itself, or if you want to use the phrasal verb grow up, we're talking about the size difference rather than the number. All right, and so as you get these different examples, you feel in your mind like, ah, now I got it. Okay, now I got it. That's what we're looking for, all right? So I'm growing in size rather than growing in number, all right? How are we doing for a time over here? 11.30, oh my goodness. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, almost done, but very good though, very good. I could listen uh, only to today. Uh, what do you think about ain't construction? Should people use more intelligent sounding English? Uh, watch the, what was that video I did? Nils, you remember that? We were talking about ain't. Like either, either the previous video or the video before that, I covered ain't. Watch those. Uh, thank you for coming and explaining all that stuff. Yes, it's my pleasure. Uh, it is pointless to watch movies in English if you can't understand a lot of words. Uh, I don't know about pointless, but it's certainly it will feel frustrating for you, all right? And so, like, it's the, the motivation you need, the, the psychology about, um, about how, how you feel about learning is really important. And so if something is boring or frustrating for you, it will become more difficult for you. So it won't be pointless, but it will be difficult. So if I don't know, let's say I'm learning Japanese and I don't know a lot of a lot of characters, if I try to read a novel in Japanese, I'm, it's going to be a very frustrating experience for me because I will look at this character, I don't know what it means, I know how to like look it up in a dictionary, but that's it's just not a very enjoyable experience. It's much better for me to read a comic or something like that for kids that my level is appropriate for. And so as I improve my level, then I level up the content I'm learning with like that, and that's how I improve. So I'm not trying to learn uh, like Japanese novels or whatever because it would just be too difficult for my level of reading. Uh, is okay, that works for me. I hope uh, you will correct me if I make mistakes. Well, you could, you could communicate the same thing when you're writing as well. Uh, <laughs> yes, you don't need to use ain't, uh, but yeah. You, it's, again, there's some things it's important for you to understand the vocabulary, like ain't. If you watch movies and there are people using slang or something like that in it, but you don't necessarily need to use that same vocabulary. Uh, Renan says, oh no, I didn't get any notification about the live stream. I'm gonna watch it later from the beginning. Sorry to hear that. I don't know how YouTube notifies people or not, uh, but yes, we always make the videos available so people can watch them again. Uh, Zakaria says, when I read some book with difficult sentences, how to fix that? Well, try to not read difficult books. Or you know, go go to something where you understand at least 80 to 90 percent of that information already. That way, it's much easier to learn new information in the context, and you don't need to have a dictionary or something like that to learn with. 
thank you, Drew. I hope you will be back soon. Yes. So I don't have a, a, a video idea yet for Thursday, but I should have um, something by then, <laughs> I guess. Let's see. Wesson says, my idea doesn't grow up yet. Yes. Well, if you're talking about like an idea growing up, it's a similar kind of idea. All right, thank you. This uh, actually a huge live stream. Glad to hear it. If you know other people who would enjoy this, do recommend the stream. Yes, for some reason YouTube doesn't like recommend the channel or whatever. I think, I think, I'm guessing. I don't know this for sure, but I like years ago I turned off advertising on my channel. So I don't get like advertising revenue. Like I get like a very, very tiny amount from YouTube. But you'll notice if you watch my videos, there's no advertising before that. So I don't know if YouTube uh, doesn't show my videos because of that or not. Like some videos it does, but other videos it doesn't. But I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, um, but I don't, I don't have monetization on, uh, on the YouTube channel. So I don't know if that like hurts my, uh, I don't know, then like showing the channel. Uh, but yes, yeah, so if you know other people who would like it, then please share it. Okay, it says, hi, Drew, you are a, a you're very teacher. Maybe mean very good, I guess. Uh, I realize that we can learn a language, uh, that we can learn a language by listening and understanding vocabulary. Yes, that's the whole point. That's how you learned your native language. All right. So the what, what I'm doing to help you learn English is how you learned your native language. All right, uh, wherever I behind you, you would say I am behind you for your name. Uh, I've watched some of your videos. I have to say you definitely teach English very well. Glad to hear. Uh, Vega says my ability to speak more spontaneously has increased like five times since I started watching you. Well, fantastic. Again, if you know other people who would enjoy that, recommend they watch the channel. Uh, Zakaria says I want to learn linking words. Uh, we'll search our channel for that, or just search YouTube in general. I'm sure you'll find lots of videos. Uh, but I'm going to lose my voice again if I keep speaking. Ah. But hopefully you all have enjoyed this. If you have, remember, the main goal of this video is just to help you feel more certain about vocabulary and explain that there really are different kinds of English. The kinds of English uh, that you get in the classroom, it's useful and it is good to know that, but again, it's just a different thing. It's like a different language than how natives really speak. So you really need to get more examples. This is the kind of stuff we do in Fluent for Life. So if you'd like to learn more, get the whole system that we have for getting people fluent, you can click on the link in the description below this video and Frederick as well for improving your pronunciation, listening, and spelling. All right, uh, last uh, questions over here. Wes says, first time to catch you live. I came late, but next time I will. Well, again, watch the videos anytime you like. Knowing says, thank you so much for your lessons. I think you should add some ads. Nah, I don't want to have ads on the videos. I, it's, I, don't, I don't like watching ads on the videos, and I don't want to make people watch ads. So like the only way I earn money is if people join my programs. <laughs> All right, let's see. Why do you turn off advertising when you can make money? Because it's, it, it ruins a learning experience. It's frustrating for people to, to have that. Uh, so like the, the typical way people make money on YouTube, especially like teaching English or whatever, is like they just they need to get you to watch the video so they can get advertising revenue. Um, and so like the video doesn't need to be very good. It doesn't really need to help you learn. It just needs to get you to click on to the video. Uh, but for me, like I actually have to help you speak uh, or I don't get paid. <laughs> so that's more of it's like a personal thing for me for for teaching. And like, like, I don't I don't want to waste your time with watching other content. I know not everybody can join my programs, which is fine. But for the people who do, uh, thank you to all those people, because those are the people who really support what we do. <laughs> uh, but yes, that's why I don't have ads on my videos. So enjoy all the, the ad-free videos. <laughs> uh, uh, Elian says, this is my first time joining. I want, let's see, I don't know what's that. I want to teach my students to read fluently. I'm Bismarck from Ghana. Oh, you should get, get uh, Frederick. Click on the link uh, below this video, and that will teach them how to read. They can teach themselves. Uh, do you think it's better to talk with some grammar mistakes or it's better to think more before talking? I think it's, it's, a, it's a personal decision for you. Some people don't mind making mistakes 
Uh, and if you don't, like you can, you can kind of push yourself to do that. Uh, but a lot of people do mind making mistakes. And so if you want to speak correctly and, uh, and you worry about making mistakes, then I would spend more time really understanding the vocabulary. All right. So it, it's up to you personally. For me, like I don't mind making mistakes, but I'd rather not make them. So like I, 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 I really want to like learn something and really understand it well first. Uh, the thing that you turned off ads says a lot about you. Well, it's just like I'm, I'm kind of consistent. I don't like watching ads either. <laughs> I understand that's it's like kind of part of how the process works. But I think more people would be better teachers if they turned off ads because then they really have to show that they can teach well. <laughs> uh, but again, it's just it's it's just a different it's a different model, you know. Uh, do you think it's a good idea to learn the short stories and remember them if needed? Well, yeah, like any, any, it, it doesn't matter like what you're using to learn. The point is, do you feel certain about that information or not? All right. So you should be learning something and you should actually feel, oh, I get it now. Now I understand what something means uh, and now I feel confident about using it. So it doesn't matter if you're using stories or podcasts or whatever, like, do you understand the information and are you getting lots of examples from different people? So like lots of short stories or whatever uh, is a good example of something to do, but there are many. Is this the end of the lesson? Yes, it is. <laughs> but thank you for joining me. Uh, I don't know yet what I will be talking about uh, in the next video, but it should be this Thursday. If I'm not here, it's either because I'm sick or dead or something. I don't know. Uh, so I apologize if I don't. Uh, notify everybody, but YouTube doesn't even notify people if I am here. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but, uh, but yes, but thank you all for joining me. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, do click the like button and do recommend the channel to anybody else. Uh, that will help us grow. So we're not growing up the channel. We are growing the channel. We are increasing the size of it to grow it up, to grow the channel. All right. Have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.